Wishes to you today. I'm M.M. M. Allen. You've entered the podcast Wishapic, where prayer, creativity, and the divine gently coexist. The last time we were together, we talked about simple, powerful prayers, gentle reassurance, and faith. Today I'm talking about being stuck, a place where we can lose faith. There are times we are stuck, but a gentle nudge can quickly break us free. But deep into a rut, stuck in the muck of it, we may become desperate for an answer and do something we later wish we had not done. Instead of asking God why this has happened today, I will be talking about asking God to show us what to do next. Let's take a moment. Pick a wish. Now turn that wish into a prayer. I drop your intention into my heart. Your hope will become my prayer for you. I pray that when you are stuck, the divine will gently intervene, and with a wisp of the unexpected, God will guide you through. Toves are such gruesome-looking, make-believe creatures, a badger head, lizard body, and a corkscrew tail. They live under sundials, and they love cheese. They are harmless creatures, unless provoked. In Wishabik, they love Gouda cheese, and the only way for them to get more Gouda cheese is to align with King Osiris and keep the village of Wishabik in the dark. They are stuck in the thought and desire to obtain more and more of their precious Gouda cheese. They are so stuck in this thought, they believe it can only be delivered by the King of Darkness. They beg and they say, please, but in order to get more cheese, they must agree to help perpetuate the darkness in Wishapik. I have been stuck, and I know you have been too. Truly, being stuck can range from being uncomfortable in a situation and getting impatient, to not feeling capable, to self-pity, to doubt, to blaming others, and many times it can lead to physical or emotional distress causing us to take action we wish we had not taken. When we get stuck, we begin to doubt. I'm not good enough. This is not going to work out. I can't do it. I don't have the expertise. I have failed. I can't decide. I quit. When we get stuck and are overcome with unhelpful thoughts, we soon start to believe they are true. Any new unexpected future situation, when we feel stuck, can resurrect those unhelpful thoughts and cause us distress. But in reality, we are just stuck. When I began thinking about which creatures would be excellent cohorts for Osiris's plan to keep Wishapik in the dark, I struggled. I was briefly stuck. Not one animal came to my mind, and my imagination to provide a new fictional creature had dulled. I wasn't entirely without options, because I knew I could seek advice from a creative source, so I let someone else know about my dilemma. I felt great relief in asking for help from Deborah. Her husband delightfully refreshed my memory of the toes from Alice in Wonderland through the looking glass. I thank him for his generosity in helping me get unstuck. Unbeknown to me, God had a bigger plan for the toes from Alice in Wonderland. Sometimes when we are stuck, We face challenging problems that we would rather not share with others. I have been there. The divine works in those situations too, changing physical adversity and mental obstacles to help us get unstuck. God confirms this through signs and miracles, and the divine is always there to give you a free lift. I was enthusiastically inspired by the toes. I eagerly began writing. I introduced the toes into my story, and I work diligently. I write in the morning, 
but that morning I was greatly enthused and continued writing the Tove chapter well into mid-afternoon. I usually leave my writing for the day and read it aloud the next day, after I have established some distance from my previous thoughts. However, in my enthusiasm for those darling Toves, I decided to immediately read the chapter. I was hit with a thunderbolt. The chapter was an unorganized, misjudged concoction of words that fell in such disfavor upon me that I declared, I am not a writer, I quit. Even after a fabulous, euphoric session in a relationship with a new character, Otar, the leader of the Toves and lover of Gouda cheese, my favorite, I was deflated. The work I had finished and enjoyed the relationship I had developed with Otar, which had taken me into a passionate writing session, seemed ruined. All I saw were the glaring mistakes, and those errors tumbled into my brain as, you are not good enough. What followed were many drafts and rewrites to come, but this particular day I was stuck in my thoughts. I can't do this. I decided I was not a writer, I scattered my papers onto the floor. The intimacy I felt towards my character during this session, gone. At this very moment, I remembered my sister Mary and how I strongly wished it had been me and not her that had birthed into heaven. The wish wasn't so I could go to the place she described in a dream to me as pure joy. The wish I had tossed about in my heart was because I thought I wasn't as valuable. She was irreplaceable. She was more important in the world. I wasn't good enough. Through my eyes, my older sister, who I loved, was productive, successful, and helping many people. She was in the world engaged and fully alive using her gifts. She was loved by so many individuals. Remembering my wish to have wanted to take her place at this exact moment when I was stuck, and after I had declared I'm not a writer, brought another not-so-pleasant thought vividly to my mind. If it was my wish to upend God's plan for my sister and take me instead, my heart rested in my will, not God's will, for Mary Elizabeth or for me. I was deeply humbled by this thought. I believed my prayer life and intimacy with the divine was solid. Why this conviction and why now? Another thunderbolt. I had been stuck for some time asking why and living with an unconscious mindset, I'm not good enough. The reality, I had just been convicted of a shortcoming through the Holy Spirit. I knew only the divine would lift me out of this pattern. I had tried reasoning and had never worked in the past. When any new situation of frustration would appear, I would revert to unhelpful thoughts concluding with, I'm not good enough. So I prayed, and I did not ask why. God, if you want me to write, please show me. Then I decided to go out and enjoy life. I love the ocean, dogs, gardens, art, artists, sculptures, jewelers, illustrators, films, plays, composers, musicians, books. I left the house and took myself to an art gallery that supports and is run by local artists. I did not feel creative or clever, But while observing work by individuals that were artists, I saw marvelous images and lovely pieces. I began to feel the peace we receive when we move about and reconnect with the world. There was an artist there, but I ignored her when I came in, as I certainly didn't feel like talking to anyone. You see, I was still stuck in the not good enough. I am sure she, as an accomplished artist, would be uninterested in me. I could spoil her day. It was then that I glanced into a jewel case of gorgeous silver pieces. Rings, necklaces, intricate, bold work, simple, marvelous work. In that moment of looking at those lovely silver pieces, the divine showed me something. In that case, lying close to the glass, there was a piece of silver hammered into a word. The word was tove. Not more than 20 minutes before I was at home, stuck. That lovely silver piece answered my prayer. It showed me I should continue writing. In awe, I stood 
and the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of all good things, pierce my heart forever with knowing, without demonstrating merit, God loves unconditionally. I asked the artist about the silver piece in the case, the piece hammered into the word Tove. She told me her name was Tova. I told Tova the story of why I was visiting the gallery, a story I would normally not tell anyone. She listened. I also told her I had asked God to show me, should I keep writing? She understood my story. Like many artists and like everyone we meet, sometimes we just do not feel we are any good at what we do. We get stuck. I listened to her speak, such kind words. Then I heard her say, I want to give this to you. She wanted to give me the silver piece that said Tove. She took the piece out of the case. The passing of those moments re-engaged all my senses. I made a slight protest. She told me I could not have the piece that day, as she needed to take it home and polish her piece. She invited me to come to her home in a few days and pick up the polished piece. Answered prayer comes surrounded in love within the fullness of truth and beauty. Sometimes in a large way, those answers will unexpectedly occur in your life. Remember those sacred moments and thank God for the answers. Tova went home to polish her piece. I went home to start again and polish my chapter. I did visit Tova's home and workshop. I found out she had recently lost her sister within the same time I had lost mine. A moment of silence passed between us. I was gifted the silver Tove that was now polished. I was now ready to receive this gift. I thank Tova for her generous gift and kind heart, and I often thank God for this answered prayer and the divine, the wonderful sign of great significance. Whatever you do to serve the world, wherever you do it, believe the divine wants you there. If you are stuck, pray for breakthrough miracles, release any frustration or anger, and get out and enjoy life. O Tar, a tove lives in Wishapik. He lives under a sundial and eats cheese, preferably Gouda cheese. Deborah told me about the studio experience the night O Tar and the Toves was recorded. In her words, Deborah said, The singer Lance Boy did a wonderful job when in this studio, singing the parts for the Tove song. We recorded several tracks of Lance singing the melody and harmonies, all of which turned out great, so it seemed to time to call it a rap. As he was getting ready to leave, Lance said he had practiced a character voice for Otar at home. He wondered if we would like to hear it. I was in the studio with the owner, David West, who was also the album's producer. We said, sure, let's hear it. So Lance sang one last track, and it was absolutely marvelous. David and I looked at each other and smiled when we heard the voice of O Tar sung by Lance. A perfect match. Lance nailed it. Brilliant. It was a joyful night of making music. Life is full of surprises. Oddly, even a tove can bring joy into life. Thank you, Deborah, Greg, Lance, and David. I introduce you to Otar, the leader of the toves, singing cheese. Cheese, where's the cheese? We need cheese, if you please, lots of cheese. We'll say it nicely, precisely, more cheese, please. Where's our cheese? Cheese is the light of our day. Cheese takes the darkness away. We must have cheese, lots of cheese. Find it, please. Send 
to us from high above. She's is what we truly love. Gouda, 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 cheese. Cheese. Where's the cheese? Bring us cheese, if you please. Lots of cheese. Can we live without it? We doubt it. More cheese, please. Where's our cheese? Cheese is our highest delight. Cheese takes the chill out of night. We must have cheese, lots of cheese, find it, please, lots of cheese. I smile every time I hear this song. I want Gouda cheese and some crackers, please. May the whole earth receive the love of answered prayer, and may the many gifts, wonders, and miracles prevail. Next time, as I continue the behind the scenes in Wishapik, I will be talking about grace, the gift given to each of us from the divine. Jack receives it in Wishapik. And in that make-believe land, it is called the Spell of Goodwill. It is free to Jack, and it had been a long time since anyone in Wishapik had received this gift. Thank you for listening. I'm M.M. M. Allen in the podcast Wishapik. When you get stuck, ask the divine to show you what to do next, and be assured God will. With that assurance, go out and enjoy life. My prayers are with you. Breathe in all good things. Goodbye for now. Tickety-boo.